welcome to the gallery. My name is Eleanor Harwood and this is the Eleanor Harwood Gallery. I show contemporary art in San Francisco and what I love to do is find young artists who are emerging and then try and nurture their careers. And I think really what I'm interested in is artists that have a singular vision and that's sort of an easy thing to say but I'm really interested in people who've worked out a new way of seeing and a new way of looking and a new way of encapsulating information in their daily lives and giving it back to us. And I think the best artists allow you to look at their work and then you actually see something a different way and it re resonates with you in a way that maybe you hadn't thought to look at something before. And I hope that when you come to the gallery virtually or in person, what you are getting is a really great take on a young artist who's experimenting and showing us something really great. My name is Paul Wackers. This is my show here at the Eleanor Harwood Gallery. Um, it's titled Stand Still Like the Hummingbird which is the title of a Henry Miller essay. And so the essay for me is about how, you know, in every day, the technology that we, we embrace and, and the more and more advances we make in that, the, the less we're able to experience anything around us because everything is so immediate and available that we can't actually let it resonate. I feel like that's what I investigate with my paintings. Sometimes the impetus to make the, the works comes from Something as fleeting as just to walk down the street and noticing something that feels a little bit off or, or the way two things sort of collide when you see them. And it's sort of how, how can I relate these unrelated objects in my everyday and create some sort of a cohesive two-dimensional thing that can emulate or just try to uh, understand what it is that you're surrounded with every day and sort of reorganize and reconfigure and sort of solidify and just make sense of anything. <laughs> For me, a lot of the interest in making paintings is the idea that it's paint, and it is a painting, and there's a process and a history in that that I find interesting. And in that history, there's, you know, in almost an infinite number of languages that you can use, be it like minimalism, expressionism, you know, all sorts of formal and different painterly techniques. And when I paint these, there's a lot of variation in technique and form and in color and it's a lot of that play and balance and some of the pieces are more about painting which is the piece sculpture which has these four bands which sort of three of them exist in what could be a real space and you can sort of understand them and grasp how they exist and then the fourth band is seemingly impossible because it's it's just done with spray paint in a quick stroke, so it exists only in that moment on that flat space, but it's a painting of a sculpture, so it is purely a painting of a three-dimensional object, and then with that fourth band, it just sort of pushes it into the realm that only painting can be. And then there's another painting with a similar mark, and that same mark gave all of these weighted objects that are just sort of placed and sitting in one spot, sort of this opportunity to exist in time or in a real space or in a space that is something other than just everyday world. That piece, the smaller one, it's called Scales. So it sort of has, you know, the, when, when scales, you know, weigh, you know, the um, scales of justice or something, you could say, it's like, you know, it just this little tilt one way or the other can let anything happen or not happen. And, you know, it's sitting upon this like definite rigid base, you know, inside this stark room, but then above it, it just sort of opens and you've got potential outside of that, just which way it falls. So it's sort of a lot of this is like this juxtaposition between like tight and confined and what is just let to go wild. With a lot of the work, I, I do try to find this place that seems so unbelievably believably real in a way. It's like this weird double speak that it's so close to being something that you're incredibly familiar with, but absolutely no way are you ever going to find it. <laughs> Hi and welcome to Triple Base Gallery. We're located in the Mission on 24th Street. And my name is Joyce Grimm. I'm Dina Pugh. And we are the co-directors of Triple Base Gallery. And here at Triple Base Gallery, we support local emerging artists 
we invite them to take over the space and we are really um, fortunate to be working with artists who are multifaceted in that they not only make works on paper but they also um, may have a clothing line or maybe a musician and we encourage them to sort of realize all of those um, all those skill sets within this space. And beyond working with artists on an individual level, we like to also work with other galleries and spaces um, internationally. And we believe one of the best ways to support local artists is to get them into a dialogue with artists from elsewhere. So what we did is we um, put forward one of the artists that we work with, um, the fabulous Michelle Blade, who's a San Francisco-based artist. Um, so we put forward her as the starting point of the show, and then we asked, five different um, galleries um, from, let's see, Sweden, Denmark, Los Angeles, Tokyo, and New York. Um, we asked all of these different galleries to respond to Michelle's work and send us some pieces by artists that they think are working in a similar way. Um, we decided to use Michelle Blade's work as the starting point of the show because her work is about a coming together, um, about investigating communal experiences and what happens when people come together and social hierarchies break down, such as the, um, the Led Zeppelin laser light show at Stonehenge with the nudist sleepover. Uh, so I mean, she has a sense of humor to her work too that I think everyone here also shares, but it is kind of a, about that kind of core value system that we're talking about and that interest in kind of bringing people together in this communal experience. I think definitely like the Sumi Ink Club that is a drawing collective based out of Los Angeles, they have these open drawing sessions where the public and other artists and the two co-founders, Sarah Anderson and Luke Fishbeck, they all work together and create these collaborative drawings. The Instant Drawing Machine is a project that um, we worked on, Triple Base worked on with Nakayochi Gallery before Joyce and I took over the space. Oliver Halsman Rosenberg and Clint Taniguchi um, started Triple Base and um, under this name Crest and Dirt they create instant drawing machine. And they would just set up um, their laptop where they could get um, a signal and they would have people come over to the computer and they would ask them to tell them their dreams and then on the opposite side of the screen Clint and Oliver would then recreate the dreams and wishes that various folks had across all over the globe. One thing that I noticed um, that seemed to ring true in a lot of the artwork that was uh, sent to us was that there is overall a sort of comical, playful, playful approach, but if you really understand the practice and the methodologies behind the artist, then you see that it con it's, a, it's a very serious concept. And um, the idea of bringing people together with no hierarchy and just make something together. And I think some of the other commonalities I noticed was um, an attention to detail and patterning um, that plays itself out again and again through um, the artists in our flat files. Um, and it seemed to be common in the work that Little Cake sent us of Julian Gatos, who's an artist from Buenos Aires, as well as um, Ivan Tofnorgard, who um, is an artist um, out of Denmark. And Charlotte Fogg Contemporary sent us these amazing collages that just have such a high attention to detail, um, but at the same time they're really odd and just kind of bizarre. One major thing that we try very hard to do here at Triple Base is to make very, you know, multiple entry points. We find it to be very important that um, people are learning from the artwork that's up and from the artists that we work with. And so I hope that people walk away from it also kind of rethinking what galleries can be and the roles that they can play. Mm -hmm. But not only the gallery, I think the artwork too, what role the artwork can play, what, it, what that um, experience can do in terms of challenging like maybe other areas of study or your, the way each of us think, not just about the role of the gallery but the role of art as well.